Welcome to our video, Japan and the World. The topic for this time is, the limits of Russian manipulation. National identity and the origins of the war in Ukraine. From the 1990s to the 2022 invasion, Russia's manipulation of Ukraine was based on a post-Soviet Russian identity that was hostile to the European project. Meanwhile, Ukraine formed a national identity that was at odds with Russia's. And it grew stronger and more resistant to Russian influence. I would like to briefly focus on the RAND report. Background and purpose of this report. Russia's manipulation of Ukraine in the post-Soviet period, which culminated in a large-scale invasion in 2022 demonstrated that Russia was willing to resort to all means necessary to secure a regional sphere of influence. Ukrainian resistance to Russia's influence campaign and invasion showed the extent to which Ukraine saw its national interests as best served through independence from Russia and, beginning in 2014, integration into Western institutions. Events could have taken a different direction. Russia and Ukraine share historical, cultural, religious, and interpersonal ties. Russia in the early 1990s appeared to be on a path toward democratization and constructive relations with its neighbors and the rest of Europe. Many Ukrainians also saw their future as an independent country that was part of a greater Europe in some form. Given the alignment of national interests in the early days of the post-Cold War era, Conflict was not inevitable. How did things go so wrong? The purpose of our research was to investigate the origins of Russia's manipulation and invasion of Ukraine. The study began with the following questions. Why did Russia seek to manipulate and control Ukraine beginning in the 1990s and ultimately invade the country? Why did Ukraine resist Russia's efforts to influence its domestic and foreign policy? Findings. In the early 1990s, there was a brief internal competition for Russia's post-Soviet national identity. There were political camps that wanted Russia to follow a European path of democratization and all of the requisite elements of that process, which might or might not have culminated in formal European integration. But these groups and their vision relatively quickly lost sway within Russia and more conservative forces took control to return Russia to a more traditional identity as an autocratic, orthodox, anti-Western great power with imperial aspirations for control beyond the borders of the Russian Federation. The implication of Russia's reversion to historical patterns of autocratic governance and imperial behavior turned out to be existential for Ukraine. Why did Russia follow this path? Our findings marginalize the idea that external factors such as North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, enlargement was the primary driver of Russian behavior. We note instead that Russia has experienced similar contests for power repeatedly over the past several hundred years. A liberal opposition appears and attempts to dilute central authority only to be rebuffed by conservative forces who perpetuate the status quo of an autocracy undergirded by the unwavering support of the Orthodox Church. The reason for this outcome is that Russia's religious history has combined with other unique historical events to embed a political culture within Russian society and among the elites that has been impossible for liberal reformers to overturn for any substantial period of time. And this culture helped to form a contemporary national identity among Russians as a distinct and separate entity from Europe, which in turn led Russia to seek a sphere of influence that is incompatible with the post-World War II European regional order and Ukraine's place within it. Despite some cultural and historical similarities with Russia, post-Soviet Ukraine formed a national identity that was fundamentally at odds with Russia's self-image. This happened for myriad reasons, including the people of Ukraine's distinct development from Russia culturally, historically, and politically. Although Ukraine's post-Soviet national identity formation was far from smooth or uniform across the country, 
Russia has taken actions since 2014 that unified Ukrainians around an image of their country that is independent of Russia with contrary national aspirations. Despite attention in the West to Russian prowess in manipulation, Russia seems to have significantly misjudged the robustness of Ukrainian national identity that led to a series of self-defeating policies in Ukraine over the past two decades. Key takeaway. This report highlights the importance of political culture and national identity in analysis of great powers such as Russia, or China, as well as their immediate neighbors. Exploring the origins of these national characteristics can reveal historical patterns to inform our baseline assumptions about future behavior. It also calls attention to the internal cultural and historical forces that arguably are more influential in determining that behavior than Western policy. Future research on great power behavior should incorporate a broader range of anthropological and sociological literature to improve our understanding of our competitors and the nature of intergroup competition. Conclusion Russia's manipulation of Ukraine in the post-Soviet period and large-scale invasion in February 2022 was the result of the formation of a post-Soviet Russian identity that was hostile to the European project. That identity was the product of centuries of a Russian idea of an autocratic, orthodox, and anti-Western great power. These characteristics are incompatible with Europe as it exists in the 21st century. The relative degree of unity in Europe on the political, economic, social, and security pillars of integration, and Russia's rejection of most of those pillars, reduces maneuverability in Russian alliance and partnership building in Europe and directs Russia to seek common cuz with its closest neighbors on an alternative integration project that corresponds to Russia's self-image. Contrary to Russian assertions, Ukraine's post-Soviet national identity was at odds with that of Russia. And the more Russia insisted that Ukraine was not what Ukrainians thought their country was, the more consolidated a distinct Ukrainian national identity took hold and the more stringent Ukrainian resistance to Russian manipulation became. One could argue that the most consequential promoter of the consolidation of Ukrainian national identity was Russia itself. Various theories on manipulation including those of the Russian special services, contend that successful outcomes begin with insight into the core beliefs and behavioral patterns of a target. Armed with that information, an adroit manipulator can set conditions such that the object of manipulation will act in a way that seems perfectly aligned with self-interest but, in fact, is playing into the hands of the subject. Because of the closeness of the two countries in various aspects, Russia arguably should have been able to find a way to create conditions such that Ukraine would have willingly made decisions that corresponded to Russia's national identity and regional vision. But the 30-year confrontation between Russia and Ukraine that culminated with Russia's invasion demonstrated that there are limits to Russian manipulation. And the limits, in this case, stem from a Ukrainian national identity that Russia did not understand. That's all. The limits of Russian manipulation. National identity and the origins of the war in Ukraine. Just briefly focusing on the RAND report.